Hello. All right, we are back to work on page two. Um, we did page one. That was our swinging pocket doors, arms, whatever you want to call it. So page two is going to be the page with the envelope. This envelope magnets down over here and that's what keeps this from flying open. So you have to open the envelope to do that. Um, so I made my own envelope. If you already have one that will hold a recipe card, you do wanna have an extra inch in your in your width so that you have enough room to put your your brad over here that holds it connects it to the page so you need to have one your recipe cards are usually six so you need to have at least seven seven inches by our cards are four so more than four <clears throat> if you already have an envelope by all means use it if you know how to make your own envelope that works too um i'm going to make my own so we're going to do that real quick, and then we will go about putting the rest of this together. So whenever I was picking out the paper that I was going to use to make my envelope, I uh, needed to go ahead and pick out my decorative paper that's going on these front two pieces. I liked how this book had what looked like came from a recipe book page. <clears throat> so in the farmhouse living... Cartabella went ahead and has one here. They are perfectly sized because it needs to be at least six inches. Um, and that's what this will do. So I'm going to use this page. And I believe, yeah, this will be perfect in length too because our pages, I'm sorry, in, in height. Because our pages are eight and a half, so we'll just have to trim off a little off the bottom. Maybe skim the top and it'll be perfect. So... <clears throat> We're gonna use that. So it's got this red on here. So I picked orange paper to make my envelope with. I did not have any, oh, gingham is what I wanted, paper that was in this color of red. And honestly, I'm from Oklahoma. So you either have God's favorite orange, which is OSU orange, or you have stinky OU. So I'm covering that up with my, my God's favorite color of orange. <clears throat> it runs deep here, my friends. So I'm going to start my envelope. Again, if you don't want to do this part, I'll show you while we're doing the tutorial where you can add magnets or how you can make your own closure, and then you don't have to worry about it at all if you don't want to do this part. So this is my little We Are Memory Keepers. I've tried to use the scoreboard and the little piece that they give you on the back that is supposed to show you how to make an envelope. And no matter what I do, my brain cannot wrap itself around it. So I bought this handy dandy thing. I use it all the time. I've made the most adorable Valentine cards for all of my students um, whenever I was in a classroom. And you would just simply open them up. I'd use a sticker to close them. And then you could just write on the inside and they loved it. So, I am going to use the measurements for a 5x7 card. I don't know if you can see that. I need 9.5 by 9.5 paper, and we're going to use the 4-inch measurement. I've already cut my paper down to 9.5 by 9.5. <clears throat> I'm supposed to put my starting mark on 4. First thing you want to do is go ahead and punch it. Punch out your notch. And then under here... Yeah, and you got to kind of just learn. If you take your uh, scoring thing and put it right along this notch, how it comes out of here, you see it goes in just a little bit. That will run you right along your score line. <clears throat> so we're back at the four. We've already punched it. I'm going to find my score line and run it as far as I can which is about there. <clears throat> and you find your score line. You're going to line it up with this little leg that sticks out. So we're not concerned about the four anymore. So here is my score line that I just made. It's lined up with this. Go ahead and punch it. 
and score my line. Take that score line, line it up with this little leg, punch it, score the next line. And this one doesn't quite go all the way to the end. <clears throat> but it gets close enough because we're going to notch it out here. Back in, line up the score line, the little notch, punch it, score it, and we have our envelope. <clears throat> so, and I'm sorry, I'm fighting allergies right now, so that's why I'm sound like a frog and constantly clearing my throat. So we're gonna go ahead and fold on those score lines. Burnish it down. And see, it never fails what I do. It's gonna, it's gonna fray that paper just a little bit. That's why I don't use the cartabelle of the textured paper, because it, it really does. So if it does it just a little bit, I smooth it out with the edge of, edge of my, my scraper here, and it'll be just fine. So here, even if I try to gently do it and work it, massage it, and tell it it's pretty, you're so pretty, yeah, it still screws up on me, so... But I've yet to have one fall apart in a book, so I think we'll be fine. Oh, I can do the ends. I forgot. So on the back side of this, this was our notcher for the front. We can round our corners on the back. Or if you have any other corner rounder, you can do it there. I'm not going to worry about these because you don't even see them once they're in the envelope. <clears throat> So I will go ahead and gently tell it it's pretty. So pretty. Hey, it kind of worked. Nope, there it goes. But just a little, so we'll be good. The other thing I've heard you could do is if you have, uh, say, chapstick, the unflavored, unflavored non-tinted kind, you can put that on here and that will help smooth it down and uh, reinforce it. So here's our envelope. I'm gonna go ahead and put me some glue here and some glue here. <clears throat> this, I can kind of follow that line right there. Then over here. Fold it down. Ta-da! We are so magical. So there's our envelope. <clears throat> now, some people have cut the top off um, in, in ones that I've seen like this, and then you just have an open pocket. I like to leave it on. Again, it's your world. You do what you want. Maybe I just need to not start stop braying these down and then I won't get that frayed edge. You are so good looking. <clears throat> so that worked. That's always exciting. We're going to go ahead and make our closure for it. And to do that, I am going to pick out a sticker. <clears throat> oh, that will go. I don't want to do orange because it's already orange do that. Let's do this one. No, no. Made with love. So first thing I'm going to do on here is I am going to put me a magnet right there on the back. That's where our closure is going to be. So I'm going to stick it right on there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put this on a piece of pattern paper. And then we will use that as our closure here. We may even put it up more and cut off the tip of this. We'll see. Let me find a scrap of paper. <clears throat> Here we go. This one will work. So 
So I'm going to use this as the back of my sticker. I was going to do this, and then I realized, huh, that's the same thing. So, stick that on here, anywhere. <clears throat> Push it down. There's our little magnet, if you can see the hump. So, that is in there. Cut it down. And again, you can do this or you cannot do this part. But it's easier for me to do it as I go than to come back and do it later. I have been known to forget. I almost gave... Uh, well, I did give a Disney book to a little girl. And as I was showing her how it works, because, you know, that's always a good book when you have to actually show somebody how to work it. <clears throat> as I was taking her through the book and showed her all the things that popped up and moved and swirled and twirled, and I found three pages that I had, or not pages, but little pieces that I had uh, flips totally forgotten about. Forgot they even existed. And so they, of course, didn't have paper on them. So I am sitting there and showing her. And then I said, oh, and this one's naked. Good luck to you. So she covered it up with pictures and we were good. <clears throat> this sticker came with these little, uh, they're called stubs, already out. You can try to fussy cut that out if you want. I have a crocodile that has the stub. I don't know if you can see it. It's the stub and the scallop. I'll probably be using the scallop somewhat on this page, on this book. But I'm going to use the stub on this one. Because why cre recreate the wheel if it's already there? And then I don't have to worry about doing it on the uh, with the fussy cutting. So there we go. <coughs> So we're going to put that on here. I'll cut that off whenever we're ready. So we're going to eyeball it. We're going to put us a scrimmagin of glue right in the middle where we know it will be. We'll set some in there in a minute to fill in the edges. I don't want this all the way down to the bottom because... Let's see, I'm going to line up this notch and this notch. There we go. <clears throat> this one has sides hanging off, and I'm afraid if we had too much of them hanging off down here, they're going to end up getting torn because they're just kind of hanging out there in no man's land. So now I, I can see back here. You see in there? So we'll just give it a good little squirt of glue. It's coming out the side, so we should have enough. That's another thing this handy-dandy thing is good for. I can cut all those corners with the glue. Wipe it on my hand. Sometimes I have a moo-moo that I wear, and it's really good for wiping glue on. It looks atrocious, but it's very comfortable. All right, so there's our little opening. Give it a little bit of glue. Press it down. There we go. <clears throat> so there's that closure. I'm going to go ahead and cut this bottom part of my envelope off. Ta-da! Now, oh, they get so dirty. We need to get our magnet for that part. Well, that's not good. All right, so that's not going to be strong enough to stay. We can either... Nope, let's do this. We're going to get the Timba 2.
and now it's going to stay. So we'll put that right there on the back. I'm not going to cover the back because, or I'm not going to cover over these magnets because as you saw in the other book, unless you turn it over and are purposely trying to see what's back here, you're never going to need to, nobody's going to see it. <clears throat> so there's that one. And now we got our little closure. Ta-da. Let's see. We put those back. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and bring out our page, our base page. We've made our 5 by 7 envelope. Now we need to put on B, which is our, our, our doors that swing open. So it's going to be 7 and a quarter by 8 and a half. We're going to score it at a half and 3 fourths on the 7 and 1 fourth side, or on the left side. So our paper, if we were scoring it, come off to the left. This is our page two. This is seven and a quarter by eight and a half. And then I'm going to score it whenever I say on the seven and a half or the seven and a quarter. It means the seven and a quarter up top. And I hold mine sideways. I'm sorry. So if you put seven and a quarter up top, and you're going to score it at a half and a fourth. I hold mine sideways. It's just easier for me to do it this way than to do it this way. So, we've got that scored. We're going to do that twice. Because we have two arms. Two doors. So, we're going to go ahead. That's for our hinge. And then the next one is our gusset. So, just gently pull back on it. There's our left and our right door. So we are going to need to, we're going to do this more efficiently than I did the first time where everything was cattywampus because I kept forgetting about magnets. <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do is we need to put a hole in this so that we can attach it to this door. Okay, so we're gonna put a hole right about here. You want it to be, what would that be? About three fourths and three fourths up and over. So you can eyeball it, you can get out your Measuring stick, as my grandma used to call it. Yeah, let's stick it right there. Pencil, pencil, pencil. I have 95,000 pencils, but you can never find one. There it is. So, that looks like a perfect spot. We don't want it to be more than an inch over, because remember, this is made for a 7 by 5 card, and our you know what they're called. Recipe cards are six over. <clears throat> so we don't want it to go too far. Yeah, and see, I am too far. We'll just lower it. There we go. Again, Crocodile, I'm telling you, if We Are Memory Keepers makes it, there's a good chance I own it. But if it didn't all work so well, I wouldn't keep going back. So... Find it in there. Punch my hole. If you ever watch Rosa Kelly, she uses one of these with the really pointy end and just pokes her hole in there. That works too. <clears throat> and I need to go ahead and get out, if you have them, you are definitely going to need a brad for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use an eyelet just because I think it makes it 
it finishes it. Oh. So, yeah, where I keep my my corner punchers and my uh, my lovely crocodile is in this little cart thing I have, and I was using my half inch corner rounder on the last book. And it fell just like they just now did. But I haven't learned my lesson yet to move it, of course. And when it fell, I mean, this thing is metal. I've, I've yet to find something that I can't get it to cut through. But this part is plastic. And this is the little guard that helps you figure out where to put your paper. However it goes. Oh, it's up here. Huh. So, anywho, this came off. So, it has been really fun rounding corners with a broken one and I have to line it up just with this corner and hope to God it works. Till I get me a new one. It's in the cart, but you know, food the husband likes to eat. <clears throat> so I'm going to pick out an eyelet and then I'll pick out a brad and that's what we'll use on here. You'll learn with me. There's a whole lot of off ramps on my road of information but I will get back onto the highway. I think, because if I look at the back of this page, it's some of these cards. I've already pulled out a sheet of the four by fours, the three by fours, and the six by fours. <clears throat> I've already pulled those out. This is an extra one, um, but I'm gonna use this to figure out my colors. And I like this blue. So we're gonna do that. And I have regular sized ones. Where is it? Oh, for the love. Anywho, I have one that's a regular size. But I'm going to use the bigger one just, just because. We Are Memory Keepers does a big warehouse sale once a year. And so I was able to get all of these for a crazy low, low price. I think it was in the summer. May been August. <clears throat> All right, so I have that. Let's see, we could do this green. It matches that. Oh, that looks cute. That's what we'll do. So this is going to be how we attach it to this page once we cut this down and get it ready to go on. Our B flap, doors, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> so I'm going to set this over here to the side. We can eyeball it this way. See, that's still not going to work, is it? Because I've got too much room. Oh, it's because I used a border on the other one. So... What we're going to do then is I have some of this. Let's use this. Nope, not that one. Yeah, let's use this. I'm going to use this to go underneath the page. And have it like that so that one this will fit my page but two I think it makes it look kind of cute almost like it's sitting on a tablecloth maybe we should do the green it's an awful lot of red yeah that's what we'll do so <clears throat> because I want to use this and it's only six inches across and this of course is six and a half I am off by a good little amount. If you're going to use a border punch, go ahead and punch it. And that'll probably take off the space that I'm worried about. <clears throat> I don't want to pull all those out right now. So I'm going to use this. Yeah, and we'll stick it on there. And if anything, all it does is make this page stronger. So... I 
I usually like to make my decorative paper, designer paper, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> my page is eight and a half long. So I am going to probably make the page that I'm going to cut. Um, some people cut it to where there's a quarter inch difference. Then you end up with an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here. I usually do it, let's see, if I was going to make it six. Oh no, this is the scoreboard that does that. Hold on. You can't see from five and a half to six on that one. So, here's my six. Yeah, I've confused myself. Six and a half. Good Lord. So, six and a half is the width of this page. I am so sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to take it back three sixteenths. And that's where I'm going to cut it. So I need to do... Well, this one won't be as long, will it? <clears throat> that's okay, because it's going underneath here. So this one... I need to go ahead and cut at six. I promise you it'll make sense in a moment. I'm going to cut it right down. So this is going to go on this side. I like to have mine right about here. So we've got about an eighth on each side. I am going to need to make this page. I want that black line there. So I'm going to cut it up here. You can measure it or you can hold it up here and mark where you want to cut it. So I'm going to cut on this black line. I'm going to save this because this is going to work on something else because we'll have the bottom half on the other sheet. I know that this is probably clear as mud and I apologize. I told you it was going to be a bumpy ride. So that was the bottom of the page I just cut in half. So this will be cute to use maybe on the inside. And then I need to cut... This was the top. I want it cut. I decided right there looked good when I measured it up to my actual page. So, go down. That is going to go right here. If you don't want to put a backer page on it, you don't have to. And you'll just have this hanging off the side. And that is perfectly fine and wonderful. I am going to go ahead and put this where it's off to the side and I will just layer it and it will look like this. So I am going to measure this out because it needs to be the same length as the recipe page. So, line them up. There we go. Put it down to the edge of the blade. Now they're the same length. I'm going to cut this in half because I don't need it to go all the way across. I just need a small, small part of it. Alright, so we'll put this in our scrap pile. Hang that back where it goes. <clears throat> so this is how my pages are going to look when I put them on. And then I'll put this on the other side. And in my brain, that does not always work correctly. It looks like the edge of the recipe book sticking out. So that's what we're gonna do. And I don't know if these are actual recipes but there's Aunt Theta's Sunday Fried Chicken, Missy Grander's Chicken Fried Steak, 
which is continued over to here, and Imelda's Southern Fried Catfish. This must be Imelda. So, we do not want to put these on the page yet. I told you this one's kind of convoluted, and I apologize, because it is our second page right out the bat. <clears throat> so, go ahead and get page two base page. <clears throat> we are going to glue page 2B to either side. Remember, we have one to the right and one to the left. So just like we did our others on page one, Ooh, run our glue on here. Line up our bottom corner with our bottom quarter of the page. Oh, line it up all the way up the page. There it goes. Smooth it down. If we're lucky, it is almost square. There it is. Go ahead and smooth this down. Don't worry about your gussets on the other side. They will catch up, I promise. They won't get smushed. They will still work. All right, so there's the left side. <clears throat> and now we'll do the right side. All right, take our bottom corner, line it up with the bottom corner of our page. Line it up along the side. This is that gusset from side one. All right, we are as square as we're gonna be. And since my mom swears these books are perfect, as square as we're gonna be is perfect. All right, so that's in, smush down. Everybody's getting to know each other. Good to go. I, yep. Now, we can do this to where this is on top. And then this page is here. You just have to go this way instead of this way. And I'm going to do it that way because... This looks like just a page that's been thrown up there until you open it up. See what I'm saying? I mean, you may not, and that's fine. But my brain says we're going to do it this way. Because this is the title page, so I want it to be on top, even though a title page should be on the left. And it goes to the right, such as the world. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is my green that's going to go on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and slap some glue on there. I'm a lot less shaky than I was this morning. Well, you have no idea if it's morning or afternoon. Less shaky than I was in the first video. All right, so I'm just eyeballing it. Again, it's a approximately an eighth of an inch all the way around top to bottom smooth that out make sure your glue is getting everywhere <clears throat> now we're going to take our page slap the glue on it again if you want to use tape and you feel comfortable with it you go right ahead I did. I have twin niece and nephew. And so I made them both a baby book. And their mom filled it, even though it was made for 12 months, in six months. So I'm getting ready to have to make them another one. And that's whenever I discovered that the tape 
was really not working because she would cram that thing full of pictures, which I loved. But then they were, the pages were becoming too heavy for the tape. All right, we're going to pull it down just a little bit so it covers up that green. Smooth it out. <clears throat> but some of us make these books just because we like to look at them. I have two or three over on my shelf that I'll never give to anybody. I don't know if they'll ever get pictures in them, but I sure do like looking at them. All right, so this side, the left side, we're going to put this on here, but we don't want to put it on yet because we have to also put our envelope on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of ballpark where they're going to go. You know what? This may be what we use tape for. Let's pull out that tape. Because I really just need it to hold it on there until I'm ready to glue it down. So, left side. Slap down a little bit of tape. <clears throat> this side is going to go here. But I need to know where to place this in relation to the green. So if my green was to go right there, then my top page would go right there. Okay. So holding that, finding my corner on the bottom right. Oh. There we go. So that's where that'll go. <clears throat> now it's not glued down. I just needed to go ahead and put this edge on so I can figure out where I'm going to put this because I have to do all of the magnets. So when we close our book, our page, it will look like this, okay? And then I'm going to have my envelope positioned on here. I want it to somewhat be even so that looks even on each side. I don't want to cover up these cute people, so I'm going to leave it down a little bit from being centered. I'm going to mark my hole. I marked it on this page. I do not want it to go through my base page. That is why I did not put it down yet. So let's see if we can knock all this over again. We're going to go ahead and put our hole Oh, it doesn't go far enough. So that's when we will go ahead and punch it with this. All right, so there's my hole. If you're using an eyelet, this is where you put your eyelet on. If you're not, that works too, but that's where we'll put our eyelet. So if you're not, just hang on a minute. I gotta pull out more toys. So this one, I can punch holes and things. What is that? Six, seven inches into a piece of paper. <clears throat> so I have my setting set to the eyelet. I'm going to put it back here to the hole punch, which is going to be this one. I'm going to line it up. There we go. That's where it's going. So there's our hole. Here's our eyelet. Now my eyelet's down. Not going to be able to read how to do all of Emilda's southern fried catfish, but such is life. So there's my eyelet. I'm going to put this monstrosity back. Yep. 
Yep. I did that wrong. Totally did that wrong. Oh, well. We're going to go with it. So the eyelet should have gone on the book while it was there. I told you a bumpy ride. It's going to be like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride at Disneyland. There we go. That'll just really spin. So I've got my Brad back here. Got it down. Gonna put some tape over that. Just to keep it from being too rough. It's getting ready to have glue all over it too. So, but it'll spin. <clears throat> all right, so now we need to put our magnets that are going to keep this attached to this page as we use it for a closer for the right side. So I am going to go ahead and use 10 by twos. You can use 10 by ones. Oh, let it go. Ooh. Boom. <clears throat> And I'm going to put them, let's see if we have this on here, and it is straight. Use that to hold it still. Oh, come on. Yeah, that'll hold it in place. And I'm going to put one around here and one around here. So I know my envelope starts approximately here. And then I can see where it's positioned here. So, yep, we're ballparking it. So there's one. And there's two. They can be straight. They can be wonky. I don't want them over in the middle because our other page is going to come in here and I do not want it to interrupt to be a, a, a sheet between where we're going to go, if that makes sense. So, take that off, spin this down, find where our magnets are. Put my tape down, sticky side up. I'm going to hold my envelope up because I don't want that to attach until I have it lined up where I want it over here. So we should have, there they are, our magnets. There's that one and there's that one. And again, I'm not covering these up with paper because nobody's going to see this unless they're just really curious as to how this works. And then by God, they know. They can look and they'll be like, oh, that's how they did it. So there it snaps right to. And I did use those 10 by twos. Um, you can double up, double up your 10 by ones because it's got a, a thick page that's going to be coming in here that I want to make sure it holds down. So, there's the right side. Now we can attach this paper to the left side because we have our envelope attached. So, slather it down with glue. I am surprised that my little, I have a little Shih Tzu and her name is Missy. 
She's black and white. I am shocked she has not come over here and tried to join us. Because she has a little bed by the window next to my craft desk. And sometimes she likes to come up here and stick her pretty self in my business. But she wasn't feeling too good last night. Thankfully, my husband's a veterinarian. <clears throat> we had some medicine here that we could give her. Don't know what it was. She may have just not been feeling good. But she was perkier today. She's been eating her treats, going outside. So I think she's doing much, much better. But she is curled up on her little bed, looking outside. All right, so I'm gonna smooth this down. I'm gonna take off the extra glue that seeps out the side. There's my, my magnets. All right, so there is the front of page two. And it closes. What more can you ask for? Yay! So that turned out pretty all right. I love the orange. All right. <clears throat> so now we're going to open it and we're going to work on the inside, which is way easy compared to what we just did. And I am so sorry for messing up there in the middle. But I've only ever done it once before. And I know that I went through several sheets of paper when I did that. So these are our small pockets that are going to go up here. B1. We've got four of them, and this is where they're going to be placed. They are going to hold four inch recipe cards, six by four, and they are all measured to the point that we could perfectly fit. Let me show you our recipe cards right in there. So that's what we're getting ready to do. And then we have C, which is the bottom pocket. If you want, you can tell on here, this is another place I messed up. That's why there's a hole here. If you want to put another hole, another eyelet there, and then stick you a little ribbon that kind of reminds people, oh, yay, this one moves. I did it because I screwed up. So when you screw things up, you either start all over again or you make it work. And I decided to make it work. All right. We're going to go ahead and snip off all of our corners. I have already... I have got something sticky on there. I have already scored these. Right? So it is... Sorry. Seven and a half by three and a half. When our pocket's done, it will be six and a half by three. I scored it at a quarter, I'm sorry, at a half inch on the left, the bottom, and the right. This is my C pocket. Don't forget to kind of make it a wonky, a kinky miter it, if you will. There's no perfect way to do this. I try to go right where the cross is, where the two lines meet. Sometimes they come out perfect. Sometimes they come out almost perfect. Or if you were Mary Poppins, they're practically perfect in every way. They're not absolutely, but they're practically. When I taught art, my classroom was done in Mary Poppins because I think that is just the most imaginative movie and I loved it. I have her on my cup. A lady on Etsy made this. Oh, it's gorgeous. I'll find her name. But isn't that cute? So yeah, there's my Disney cup. I did a Mary Poppins book, but I completely stole it from one that... uh I think Cal did over on Paper Scissors Story. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and start folding on those score lines. We got a lot of gluing to do. I did go ahead and shoot Miss Cal Summers a message telling her that I have uh, apparently referenced her more than I thought I did. <laughs> so she also has been known to say things like, we are good to glue. So we're going to fold all these in and then we will be good to glue. So those are all done in. Now we're going to make sure they're going to somewhat stay. And you can do this on either side. You can do it on the, on the outside. You can do it on the inside. You just want to make sure that those lines know, <clears throat> that fold, I should say, that you're going to fold by God. What do you want to note? One more pocket, not fold. Okay, so there's our four door pockets that go on B, and this is C, and it's going to fit right there, right in between. Let's go ahead and put that down. Now, if you are using tape, you want to make sure that the edge of your tape is along the outside part of the pocket, not the inside, because you don't want it to start peeling up from the bottom. I'm not as worried about it with glue because I smush it down. And it just gets smushed all over the place. Oy. All right. Bottom left corner to bottom left corner. Don't put it on your, your hinge line there. You want it right next to it. If it's on that hinge line, it's going to make it harder to close the door. All right. Smush it. Make sure everybody knows where they belong. I'm going to dig out those bubbles of glue that come out. And we are good. So let's go ahead and put the bottom pockets on. And then we're going to figure out the top. There's more measuring involved. Oh, but I made the book eight and a half tall because I knew that most of the recipe cards I was going to put in these books was going to be four and instead of making it eight where I didn't have any give I've got a little bit of room left where I can easily be able to take recipe cards in and out if I did these exactly at four there wouldn't be much room for taking out. So if I did it exactly at four, our recipe card would be C would be right on top. And I'm gonna make it to where there's just a little bit of room. Just a little bit. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and put the pocket down on the right side. I'm sorry, the left side. So we're going to do our inside corner and line it up. This side gets a little wobbly because of our magnets there, but 
line it up the best you can and we'll be good. You can turn it over. Work with me. There we go. I just really want to make sure that that's connecting. All right, so if we have eight and a half, our cards are four. If we split that in half, then you got four and a quarter. And we should have four and a quarter. So you can, with your measuring stick, put the bottom at four and a quarter, mark the top on both sides. All right, four and a quarter on the bottom. Mark the top. And that is where the bottom of our top pocket is going to go. Next pocket. Oh, for the love. There we go. Oh, my daughter said. So, if you are watching this, and if you are doing a book with this tutorial, I have a Facebook page that I'm going to start trying to put some of these tutorials on called Neverland Albums. Again, I told you I was slightly obsessed with Disney, didn't I? I am. So, Neverland al Albums on Facebook. Um, that may be where you found the tutorial. <clears throat> but if you would kindly just show me how you did your book. If you made it as a recipe book, if you made it as any other kind of book. Um, just shoot us a picture so we can see and be as excited about it as you are. And of course, if while you're doing this you run into any problems, go ahead and you can send me a message on there. Line up the bottom with this line and I'll see if I can help you with it. Because I knew that my verbal instructions are about as clear as mud. And for that, I apologize. <clears throat> the overhead projector in my art class was my friend because... If I couldn't verbalize it properly, I could at least show them. And I worked with kindergarten through fifth grade. So they were used to being visual learners. Thank the good Lord. All right. Our page two. And this should be the hardest page we do. I think page number five is the only other difficultest difficulty type page that we're going to have besides this one. And hopefully I will have a little bit of my mojo by then. So here's our page two. If you are not going to do the envelope before you put pattern paper on these pockets, you could put, let's see if it went this way. And if you didn't have the envelope, put a magnet here, put a magnet here, and before you put this paper down, so it will be before you put on your cover page or your decorative paper, match the magnets over to here, and then you don't even need the envelope. So there's an easy way to do that if you don't want this difficult, but by God, I swear I'm going to do it envelope. You can put it on this side, and then it will close that way. Whatever floats your skippy. All right, there is page two. I will see you for video for page number three. Thank you.